hey, what if you wanted to create a website with Bootstrap? So there is a Bootstrap CDN, and we can load the Bootstrap CDN directly within our web app, which gives us the ability to use Bootstrap as a framework in order to create our web content, our web page content. So I'm just going into the Bootstrap. I'm going to grab the starter template for Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab that content. And then within the index file, let's update the index file and we're going to have the Bootstrap framework. And we can save that. And then afterwards, I'll show you how you can link to files locally so that you can clean up some of your file and your file contents and make it look a lot neater. So there's, a different, there's different ways to do that. And I'll show you how you can set that up. So now going into the page itself, let's uh, load the page within the web browser. And we've got our index page. So what if we want to set a title for the page? So going into the data, Let's uh, pass in a value for title. And the title of uh, this page can be home page. And then going within the index. So now we have a choice if we wanted to output that home page content. We can do data title. So that will output home page. So that's one way that we can generate some content dynamically. And as you can see, it is bringing in the external files into the page. So that means that we do have access to jQuery. So you can try it within the console and you can type in jQuery and see so it returns back the jQuery object because jQuery is present in the page. If I go to the about page and let's clear that and run jQuery, we're not gonna get a response because jQuery is not defined in this template file. So it's not within the about, it's only within the index where we've got jQuery. And we brought in the full Bootstrap framework. So now within the Bootstrap, if we want to have some components, we can set up the various Bootstrap components using the Bootstrap classes for styling. And let's uh, go back to the home pa index page. And we see we've got all of that Bootstrap styling ready to go within our web page. And that's how you can bring in external files. And what happens if you want to bring in a custom style sheet or a custom font and share it across all of your files or a custom JavaScript? So you can do that as well, where we can set up a script file. And typically, if we wanted to bring JavaScript, we'd have to bring it in this way within the HTML. So if we wanted an alert that came out and popped up whatever the homepage message was, we can do this within the alert. So it'll just pass in that alert content. If I go back and if I refresh the index page, we're gonna get the alert for homepage being output. And what if we want it to go on about as well? So if we do want it to go into about as well, there is a way to up update this. And I'm gonna get rid of the home and set it up more dynamic here. So now whenever we refresh it, it'll just say the index page. So I want this to show up on the about and I wanna bring that script content in. So the way to do that with the Google Apps Script, because we are only limited to create HTML files and that's to create another HTML file and then this can be your JavaScript file or app whatever you want to call it, if you want to call it app.js like that, it's going to create an HTML file. We can take that HTML code and don't forget you do need to have the script tags because this is an HTML page. And now what we want to do is we want to include that content into our regular output of the page. And this means that we need to set up a custom function for Google Apps Script. I'm just gonna call this function include. It's gonna require one parameter, and that's gonna be whatever the file name is that we wanna include. And we're gonna use the HTML service to render out content and use the getContent method in order to render out the content that's within the file as HTML. So creating HTML output from file, and then whatever the file name is, 
and then use the get content method in order to create that content as a string value. So now we've got this include function that will include any one of these into any other HTML file. So now let's go over to the HTML file. And just as we saw before, we can use the include to include different script tags. So let's uh, run some code and we'll use the include to render out whatever the response of this function is going to be. And we know within this function, we're returning back the output from the HTML file. So it does require that one parameter and that's going to be the file name. So that's going to be app js.html or we could just simplify it to app.js. Now there is one problem here because we're breaking back into the code but we don't have a value for data title within the app.js. So there's a number of ways to solve that and one of the ways that we can solve that is we can set that up as just regular script values and we can just use JavaScript in order to set the title of the page. So using the title value and whatever value we're getting back for data title and assigning that to the JavaScript. And as we know with JavaScript, uh, it doesn't matter where we're setting it, we're still gonna have access to this variable. So we're gonna have access to title so we can output the alert as regular title. And I'll just add test plus whatever the value of title is. And if there is a variable value for title, then it will output that. So let's try it and refresh. And so now we've got the test index page and that's coming from the page title where we've got the data title. So that's one way that we can pass the content. And of course, most of the time, you're not gonna be probably passing JavaScript, but you can. So you're not gonna be going back to the server side. Another option too is if you wanted to, you could include a value or whatever the data title value is here, but then you also have to update it within the Google script where we've got the include and then add another value and then create output from file. And uh, it does get fairly a lot, a little bit more complicated. So the easiest way is to stay on the client side and keep it passing in using the JavaScript. And now if we wanted to, we could also use this include within here and now whenever we load the about page, we should also have the alert popping up and it's running that JavaScript code. So let's refresh. And there isn't a value for title that's being set. So we also need to include the script tags at the top, assigning a value for title because we're just throwing an error with the JavaScript otherwise. So there we go. So now we're able to pass that value that's originally initially coming from the server side and then pass it back to the client side and then we're still able to include HTML files because these get rendered out separately. So that's important to note. And of course, if you're not passing any dynamic values into the JavaScript, it's gonna, uh, you don't have to go through all of that where you add the JavaScript in the top and you can simply just set the title and have it render out the alert. Otherwise, it's gonna throw an error because it doesn't know what the value of title is. So go ahead, try this out, add the include, and you can also include style sheets. So let's uh, also do a quick include of a style sheet. Uh, so let's create that and quickly selecting some Google fonts. And if we wanna use this as our default font, let's select the font style and we're gonna embed it. So we've got two options to embed. The way that I'm gonna bring it in is import it and then I'm gonna assign it to the body as the font for the body style. So going into the body, I'm gonna create a brand new style, style CSS, if you wanna call it that. And this needs to be wrapped because this is regular HTML. So we need to wrap it with the HTML tags. So the style tags, it's importing that style font. And if we wanna use the style font, this is the font family that we can assign to the body. So setting up the body object and set the font family for the body object. And just as we've included app.js, we can include the style CSS file. And that will allow us to have uniform styling across all of our pages. And let's also set the background color 
And let's set the background color to red. Save that, go into about. So background color is now red. Let's also try it on index just to make sure it's working. And also background color of that is red and the font has been updated as well.